Hello, this is Cheryl Land. I'm with Jim Grant from KNXT and our social justice director. We haven't said that in a while, what we, you do. We haven't said that, but it's still true. It is still true. You are. You're our social justice director here at the diocese. Anyway, we are um, on Tuesday, March 15th on in the fifth week of Lent. So we're kind of getting pretty much closer to that Holy Week and, and bringing us towards, towards Easter. So I'm hoping that your journey of Lent has been very blessed for you. But before you do that, why don't you also introduce the ministry that you are exercising at this point in the diocese? Which, which one are you particularly oh, referring whichever to? whichever <laughs> one you'd like to share your work in the chancery and what you're doing for the diocese, your okay. own position here. Well, I work for a Monsignor Dryling, who is our vicar general, and so I'm his assistant. But one of the, thi one of the things I do in my volunteer time is I actually work with our CIA, those who are coming into the church and, and doing yes. in that inquiry phase. So I'm really enjoying that part of, of what I do. Um, it's, it's neat to see people who come to a sense of, well, what's this Catholic church I've heard a little bit about, and I'm curious now, what's it all about? And journeying with them and, and opening up their heart to the richness and the treasures of the church. So um, we're going to be going to see. We are starting with John. We're still in the chapter 8 of John. Um, we've been talking about people who want to just trip up Jesus. They want to just find everything little that they can to trip him up and to accuse him of things. But we also see Jesus trying over and over again that he is constantly saying, this is who I am. This is what my mission is all about. And I, and I speak not just for myself, but I give testimony to the Father. The Father gives testimony to me. And that theme is carrying through in our gospel again today. And he gets even a little more, his language becomes even more direct when he speaks to these Pharisees. Because you can see these Pharisees are having trouble really having trouble getting the message of what Jesus has to say. But let us begin with <coughs> our prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, perseverance in obeying your will, that in our days the people dedicated to your service may grow in both merit and number. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, our reading picks up exactly again where we left off yesterday. And some of the things that Cheryl was bringing up yesterday are going to be borne out exactly in the reading today because they are thoughts that were seeded or planted mm -hmm. in, in the reading yesterday. But today, as she said, they become clear, bold statements and it, Jesus is like leaving no quarter. Uh, mm -hmm. In this passage, he is supremely clear and, and very convic convincing and convicting, not only to the Pharisees of that time, but to us, I think. And here's what he says. Okay. Again, he said to them, I go away and you will seek me and die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself, since he says, Where I am going, you cannot come? He said to them, You are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins, for you will die in your sin unless you believe that I am he. They said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, Even what I have told you from the beginning, I have much to say about you and much to judge. But he who sent me is true, and I declare to the world that I have heard from him. They did not understand that he spoke to them of the Father. So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he and that I do nothing on my own authority but speak thus as the Father taught me. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone for I always do what is pleasing to him. As he spoke thus, Many believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
I just like that last sentence. All yeah. of that. It's like something yeah. good. Finally, somebody <laughs> Finally. <laughs> steps up here. Yes. What would you like to share with us today about the gospel? Well, I think I, I tried to like read it slowly so that certain words, again, that are John words come up. But, but more to the point is the basic narrative. We've been watching this progressive faith, this very, very um, uh, declarative faith that we're trying to develop in ourselves to accept a really committed faith. And we're seeing that Jesus is finding the people that are with him in this moment totally unteachable. They are not able, because he's from above, they're from below. They're from this world. He's not from this world. In other words, unless we're on the same wavelength mm -hmm. with Jesus, we are not going to be able to learn the lesson that is ours to learn. We're going to be resistant, and we're going to die in our sin. That is what I see there, which is almost repeating what every day. It's the same message in different words. Yeah. What else is there? Right. I think he's just telling the people, listen, time is short. You know, please listen to what I've been trying to tell you. Please believe because I want you to, to not die in your sins okay. because there's an eternal consequence for that. So listen, open yourselves up, believe. And I think he's telling us that today every day too. You know, there is eternal consequence to how we live our life. Um, you know, I used to, I used to, while we're smoking or non-smoking, what section do you want to go to? The non-smoking room or the smoking room? Um, because there is an eternal consequence, and it, and it matters what we do here while we are on this world, on this earth. It matters the choices we make every day. Do we open ourselves up to the grace that God wants to give to us every single day? Or do we say, I don't want, I don't need I got something else to do, and it looks a little bit better than what you're asking me to do. Um, you know, we have to believe, and we have to be lis willing to listen. So he, he's being very direct here. He doesn't want us to die in our sins. And that sentence that came up so clearly, mm -hmm. even if it's hard to read, it says, for you will die in your sins unless you believe mm -hmm. that I am he. Uh, that's a difficult translation in English. I mean, I am he. I am he who what? I mean, it's like an incomplete mm -hmm. sentence. No, it's from the Greek and it's also from the Hebrew meaning. I am who am. And that is what Jesus is making very clear that he is God. And yes. that seems to be, for John, the thing we have to be convinced of. Not that Jesus is a good person. Not that he's really a nice um person to count on and look at all the wonderful things he did, but he's God. And that is the challenge that these Pharisees are not able to, to achieve. They're not able to make that jump to something so different from their background. But Jesus is asking us, do you believe that I am who am, the one who is God? I wonder if we actually mm -hmm. believe, or is it just that we're going along thinking, well, you know, there, there's God, and, and Jesus is very good, but Jesus is, for us, God. And that is a leap. That takes a lot of faith. Right. It does. And so I just hope that you have a very blessed day, and we will see you back tomorrow. God bless you. God bless. <laughs>